In this tutorial, we will introduce skins in Visualizer. With skins, we can create native multi-channel app designs using familiar design tools and native drawing libraries. Skins are used to define a widget's appearance in a Kony application. Skins can be applied depending on the state of the widget. For example, when it's at rest, receives focus, or is pressed. We will learn how to create skins in Visualizer, the different types of skins for widgets, how skins are managed and organized, skin helper tools, and common use cases with a few tips and tricks. First, let's see how basic skins are created. When a new project is created, there are no skins in the project. Let's add a button widget to a form. Notice that when the first widget of a particular type is added to the form canvas, a default skin is added to the project for that widget. Subsequent widgets of the same type will all use the same default skin. Notice, as I start editing the default skin, that a new skin is created. Visualizer inherently takes care of creating new skins when the default skin is modified. Skins are channel independent which means that separate properties can be defined for iOS, Android, Windows, and web, and for phone, tablet, and desktop. By default, all widget properties are linked together until the user decides to unlink the skin. We'll talk about that in more depth later. Every widget has different types or modes based on widget properties or interactions. Let us look at a few different widgets as examples and understand how these may differ. Here, I have a button on the login form. The button widget has the normal and focus skins, which are common across all the platforms. Notice that when I switch to Android, the pressed skin is activated in the property editor, which is unique to the Android platform. Notice also that when I select the web platform, I get the option to add a blocked UI skin, which is specific to the web platform. Similarly, if I move to a desktop form, which is typically a non-touchscreen platform, I get an option to add a hover skin for the button. These are only a few examples. There are many more. Let us now look at how skins work for a more advanced widget. In this case, the segment widget. The segment has more skins due to its complexity and the types of interaction modes it provides. The segment's widget skin will provide styling to the overall surface area of the widget and is not specific to the segment's headers or rows. The row skin of the segment widget defines the styling for individual rows. We also have the capability to provide separate styling for every other row of a segment by modifying the alternate row skin. The Row Focus skin defines the styling of a row when it is touched by the user. The Section Header skin defines the styling for a widget which has sections. By default, sections are turned off for segments, so you will not see them until you define the segment's Section Header properties. These are only the most common segment skin types. Now let's review how skins are managed and organized. A skin has several properties, such as the widget background and opacity. The background can be defined as a color, gradient, or image. We can also define the widget border color, opacity, size, and style. The widget shadow settings, and in the case of certain widgets, font type, size, color, opacity, and shadow. The changes can be previewed in the app canvas as we modify the property. A few of these properties are unique to certain widgets based on the native capabilities of that widget on the given platform. To access these properties, Visualizer forks the skin, which provides access to these properties for each platform. All of this is done automatically as soon as an advanced property, such as a gradient, is applied to the skin. Notice that as I switch between different platforms, the skin retains the same visual properties. That is because the skin is linked, as seen here based on the blue color of the link icon. If you want to apply properties and make them unique to the platform, deselect the link icon. Let's take a look at some of the helpful productivity tools provided in Visualizer. 
To make it easy to quickly share or copy skins between widgets of a given type, you can use the Copy, Paste, Assign, and Duplicate options in the Properties panel. The Copy button will copy the given skin to the clipboard. The Paste and Assign features differ slightly. When a skin is copied and pasted to another widget, a new skin with a new ID is created and assigned to the widget. When a skin is copied and assigned to another widget, the same skin is assigned or shared between the two widgets. Let's see how this is managed in Visualizer. On the screen, the first text box has the desired skin I want to use for the password text box. I will copy and then assign the skin to the second text box. Notice, as I change the properties of the first text box, both text boxes are affected since they share the same skin. If at any time you would like to make a unique copy of a skin, select the duplicate option. This will create a copy of the skin and assign it in one click. In Visualizer, notice how the skin ID changes while the skin properties remain the same when I select the duplicate option. To quickly copy and paste either gradients or colors from one property or skin to another property or skin, right click on the color or gradient. Notice the copy and paste options. This makes it easy, for example, to quickly create a new instance of a gradient from one property to another. In many cases, I would like to define a unique default skin for each of my widgets for each project. This is done by right clicking on the widget and selecting the Set Default Widget Style option. This default skin will then get assigned to any subsequent widgets you add in the project, as you can see here. Let's look at a few more unique applications that we can achieve by using skin properties without the need to create image files. This example here, a page indicator, is a circle. I have created it by simply using the border property to achieve a complete circle. The radius should be large enough so that it is equal to the height and width of the widget, as you can see in this example here. Here's an example of a shadow that I've simulated at the bottom of the screen on top of the tab menu. To create this effect, I've created a flex container and have applied a semi-transparent gradient. To submit questions, go to developer.coney.com or to learn more about Visualizer, go to coney.com, products, Visualizer.